<clears throat> when we find that a patient is pre-diabetic or insulin resistant um, or even diabetic ones, uh, most of our patients don't want to go on medications. I understand that. I didn't want to either. My family used to call me Dr. Three Days. I won't go into the digression and the story on that, but basically it was, I didn't like to take medications. I didn't like to give medications. So one of the, one of the uh, there are ways to deal with insulin resistance. One of them is lifestyle, which it has many components to it. And another is metformin. So this question often comes up, which is better, lifestyle or metformin? And actually, there has been some uh, world-class research done in that area. So I'll get to that in just a minute. But, but before I do, a brief introduction. Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D-B-R-E-W-E-R. Um, uh, PrevMed, heart attack, stroke, cancer, disability, dementia prevention. Um, <clears throat> started off as an ER doc and uh, went on to Hopkins to get some training in prevention and ended up running the program there. So uh, come see us if you have some interest in uh, living 20 more good years. <clears throat> now, I mentioned there's some world-class research about metformin versus lifestyle. And yes, uh, you can't get any more. If you see some, a piece of research, medical research, published in the New England Journal of Medicine, you can be, rest assured that's usually some pretty good science, and it's usually of um, world-class impact. This is reduction in the incidence of type 2 diabetes with lifestyle intervention or metformin. So they did that study. The, um, <clears throat> they took 3,234 non-diabetic patients, but these were folks that had insulin resistance or pre-diabetes uh, metabolic syndrome. And they did uh, one of two, two branches. It was randomized clinical trial. They followed them up for 2.8 years. Now, in the group that had nothing done, actually there were three groups, I'm sorry. The first group had nothing done and two experimental groups. The second experimental group had metformin alone. And the third group had uh, lifestyle intervention. So here's the way it went. 11 per 100 person years. Incidence of type 2 diabetes if you did nothing. 7.8 uh, cases of um, diabetes if you just took metformin and didn't do anything else. 4.8 uh, new cases per 100 person years. That's 100 people times a year of experience if you did lifestyle. So that is a resounding, clear statement that lifestyle does trump metformin. Now, <clears throat> oh, good question. What was lifestyle intervention? Was it just reading a book or giving them a, uh, a book or having them watch a video? No. They had loss of 7% bo uh, body weight goal, at least 150 minutes of exercise each week. And now th this didn't have, this was in, done in two, uh, 2002, so it didn't have um, some of the uh, high intensity interval training and resistance training that's now been shown to be even more effective than what they used. And you can do fewer minutes with it too. They did basically walking and low in intensity aerobics, but again, had to get two and a half hours every week. Uh, they had 16 lessons in a curriculum with one-on-one -on -one coaching over a 20, what, 26 week duration. And it involved diet, exercise, and behavior modification. Things that um, a lot of patients don't like to get into. So yes, no question. Um, lifestyle does trump uh, just metformin alone. There's nothing that can there's no medication made that can have a positive impact like a 30-pound weight loss if you need to have that. Um, 
Today we've got a lot more information regarding diet and that diet is uh, getting the carbs out of our diet, especially these baked uh, white flour carbs and even more so fructose in a liquid form, uh, format like obviously um, uh, obesity in a cup, um, sodas, Coca-Cola and uh, Pepsi-Cola. Um, in addition, believe it or not, orange juice is fructose in a liquid format, so you also need to avoid that. What about the exercise? Now we're seeing that, and the American College of Sports Medicine has proven this, studied the seven-minute uh, high-intensity workout. Now, they've studied it and they've shown it is effective. So again, the old, in the old days, even five, ten years ago, we used to think that you just had to do hour after hour after hour in the, uh, in the gym. No, you don't. You have, but you do have to do some intensity. Um, I don't think you, you can't do uh, five or six, seven minute uh, workouts and you're fine. You need to have at least three workouts with significant intensity per week, high intensity interval training. And uh, you do need to have a couple of other workouts. Walking is great. The other thing that's been shown to uh, improve insulin resistance is resistance training. Now, most of the time people think, especially men, when we say resistance training, they're thinking upper extremity, getting big arms, big guns, weight training. Well, yeah, you can do that. But actually what we really want to focus on is leg, thigh, hip uh, strength. And you can do that with something like a foot, called a foot up split squat. Um, glute bridges, uh, lunges, any of those things. Large muscles, lower body, your hips and your thighs have far more muscle mass than um, your upper body. And those hips and thighs and that large muscle mass actually pulls sugar out of the blood. That's why it helps with insulin resistance and uh, metabolic syndrome. And for the intense intervals, it's been shown that that increased insulin-like effect where the, the muscles are pulling sugar out of the blood actually goes up for about 48 hours. No wonder you need to do at least three episodes per week. You do three intense episodes per week and your muscles are in a, a state for most of the week where they're pulling sugar out of your blood. So it's like an endogenous insulin helper. Something else we've discovered since that study was done and published in the New England Journal in 02, we're just beginning to get a huge... Um, amount of science coming in regarding the value of sleep in um, diabetes prevention, uh, management of insulin resistance and uh, metabolic syndrome, and decrease in heart attack and stroke risk, and Alzheimer's risk. Thank you for your attention.